have some interesting tidbits coming to you from somebody who turns out to be extremely reliable when it comes to having inside sources at NVIDIA. In fact, it's one of the things that made their YouTube channel so popular in the first place is all of their accurate I guess we call them leaks, right? Coming out of NVIDIA. And the big thing is we all expected that Nintendo would be using NVIDIA technologies inside the Switch 2. This person has finally come out with his own sources to talk about the Nintendo Switch 2. And I think this is something that is really worth just really diving into and understanding what was said. Now, a lot of this comes with his opinions, of course, on top of what was said. But I think it is worth noting what was available and what his sources said to him about Nintendo Switch 2. It really helps paint a picture of the platform, its history, how long it's been ready, and Nintendo's mindset behind it. Also, hey, what is going on with the Switch coming out in 2025, right? So let's get into this and what his sources had to say. So... This is what one of his very trusted sources has been correct on stuff in the past for him have told them. I thought I'd let you know that as far as I'm aware, there's nothing wrong with Switch 2, right? People were wondering, hey, it's delayed. Is something wrong with Switch 2? In fact, the hardware and software has been done for a very long time. And the ball has been entirely in their court for years now regarding when they want to launch it. Remember, Nintendo isn't Sony. They aren't concerned about their performance falling behind the competition. They don't see further delays as something that will cause their hardware to become obsolete. They see delays as something that will cause their games to be more polished at launch. Also of note, this person, which I forgot to tell you who it is, is Moore's Law is Dead, uh, did add on, and it's not shown here in the quote, but he said this was said, that, hey... They also partially delayed this in 2025 because they have a lot of stock of Switch that they need to sell. They need to get the Switches out the door. Maybe they overproduced last year or even the year before with the pandemic, and they just have a lot of Switches that they want to get moved before they can end up getting the Switch 2 out. He, I'm just saying that, that that's something he claimed was said. He doesn't actually show it on screen as a quote. But this isn't the only quote because you can see this is the guy here. Uh, and if you scan ahead here to uh, right here, you'll see that he also has a bunch more quotes in regards to the Nintendo Switch 2. So, Nintendo Switch 2 testimonials from NVIDIA. Again, these are from two different sources. Source 1, I'm not that close to the project, but I can say that Samsung 8 nanometer is a perfect match for Nintendo. So, this is obviously just his opinion. It is the lowest cost transistor slash node on the market, and it's not expected to be as competitive for capacity, and this is capacity at production, as more modern nodes over the next few years. So while it is technically cheaper to make the cheaper nodes because of the competition around it, the prices are being driven up for those manufacturing lines, whereas the eight nanometer manufacturing lines don't have as much competition, so in theory, could be cheaper for Nintendo. Also remember that with 128-bit LP DDR5, Nintendo could realistically choose 8 gigabytes, 12 gigabytes, or 16 gigabyte capacities for the SOC we designed for them. So he's talking about the RAM, and that RAM is obviously shared with the, the graphics card and all of that. So we've already heard about 12 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes. 8 gigabytes has always been a possibility as well, although it does feel a little bit unlikely. 12 is probably where they'll go, especially because RAM costs are very, very cheap. So there's not necessarily a reason. There's not a lot of cost saving between 12 and 8. Now, there's a cost saving between 16 and 8, but yeah, just leave it at that. Now, that's just one person who isn't extremely close to the project. His second source, though, went on to say, to be honest, the Switch 2 really isn't on my radar anymore. So what he's saying basically is, hey, I used to be involved somewhat with this product. Right now, I'm focused on finishing up validation for Blackwell. Switch 2 Silicon has been done since late 2022. So they're basically saying, hey, for NVIDIA's part, they completed this back at the end of 2022. As far as I'm aware, that Digital Foundry article looking at the T239 processor leaked from when we were hacked is an almost entirely correct summary of what's true about the silicon in the Switch 2. We presented several options to Nintendo, including one that utilized Lovelace. So Nintendo was given... Lovelace, which is their 4000 series GPU architecture. Nintendo was presented something with that, and Nintendo basically selected a cost-optimized version of Orin. It has some efficiency tweaks 
from Lovelace and a few other goodies added as well, which confirms the whole that, hey, it's got some of the Lovelace features, but it's not using Lovelace. Clearly, this is just confirming or sort of, I don't want to say confirming. This is a rumor because we can't verify it, but this is at least pointing out that if the NVIDIA, basically this goes along with everything we've heard about the SOC so far, that it's going to be Ampere based, but it will have some Lovelace features, notably certain things from DLSS 3.5, although not frame generation. Again, this is all rumored stuff. It says, oh, an AMD bid against us hard for the Switch 2, by the way, but ended up losing the bid. So AMD apparently was just really, really, really attempting to get Nintendo to go with them. They apparently bid very hard. Now, again, this is just rumored, but AMD wanted Nintendo back, right? They lost Nintendo with the Switch. They wanted them back. They bid very hard, but they lost the bid to NVIDIA. There's multiple reasons to stick with NVIDIA, including the ease of backwards compatibility and stuff like that. Now, I went through the rest of his video here, and as you see, you can see the name of the sections, like Switch 2, Specs Power, AMD loses to NVIDIA, and again, that was all about uh, losing out the bid for it. Uh, if you go to here, he's just kind of going over the projected things with the... Uh, this is 8, 8X ARM, A7, 8C. This is all stuff that we've known about T39 for a while. Uh, and he, he speculates on possible clock speeds and all of that. But that's all speculative. Uh, he also goes in like what the Switch 2 is going to cost. And he doesn't really have any sourcing on it. That's just his opinion. And same thing with NVIDIA also working on a premium handheld, which is not really a surprise because NVIDIA was already working on handhelds before. And now the handheld PC space is bigger than it's ever been. So it would make sense for NVIDIA to get right back in. It's almost like the NVIDIA Shield was a great idea, but great idea too soon. Market wasn't ready. Nintendo made the market ready. Now handheld PCs are a big thing. Now NVIDIA probably wants to get into the market with their own device. Like Steam's got their own device, AMD's and everyone else's devices. So NVIDIA's like, hey, you know what? People don't want to use our tech. We'll just put our tech in our own device, which I find fascinating because are they going to end up using Nintendo's own chip or are they going to use a Lovelace-based chip and sell a premium gaming handheld? I find that just to be quite fascinating. So what did we really learn from all this? Well, Nintendo was basically, it sounds like if they went with the 8 nanometer, it's because of the current manufacturing ways and it being done back in 2022 that it's just cheaper for them to get more lines to produce the chip at eight nanometers than it is at four nanometers. Even though four nanometers would be more efficient and more power efficient, it does mean the eight nanometer chip probably wouldn't be as powerful as a four nanometer. And uh, the big thing is noting Nintendo's philosophy. And their philosophy, as one of their sources said, is that Nintendo doesn't care about not being the most powerful kid on the block. Right? Nintendo doesn't care that they're going to be behind in technology. That shouldn't be really a surprise. If you look at the Wii, you look at the Switch, you look at, you know, you, even though the Switch was using the most powerful chip at the time, it still felt behind the competitors, right? And it quickly got outclassed within a year after it was released by new chips hitting the market. Nintendo doesn't care about being behind. They're not trying to be at the bleeding edge. They're not even trying to be like, close to the bleeding edge. What they want to be is good enough for what they're doing and what their partners are doing. And that is the question is, is it going to be good enough? Uh, he does say that he feels like it could be almost as good as a Series S, but with better ray tracing. We've talked about that before. A lot of that's hypothetical and speculative, and we don't honestly know all the particulars. But the bottom line is, Look, this thing isn't going to be the most impressive piece of tech when it hits the market next year, especially compared to some of the handheld PCs that are going to be available at the time. But that's not Nintendo's point. Those handheld PCs are charging significantly more money. And I, I know Steam Deck 2 is around the corner. And yes, I do suspect this system is going to be more powerful than the current Steam Deck. The question is, how big is the Steam Deck 2 leap? If it's just a minor leap forward, Nintendo Switch 2 might actually compete with it quite well or even better just in terms of its raw performance capabilities. So we're just going to have to sit back and wait and see what happens. Obviously, we need the device to be revealed. We need Nintendo to give us details. I just thought I would share this because Moore's Law is Dead happens to be very reliable with his NVIDIA insiders. And what we basically got out of this, at least the current rumors, are that it's 8 nanometers and that Nintendo did this because it actually ended up being cheaper for them just due to the competition over the smaller nodes. And hey, that pretty much everything we've heard about this is correct coming directly from who he claims are NVIDIA employees. That Everything we've been talking about with this thing, outside of people hoping it's 4 nanometers, there was never actually a hint it was 4 nanometers, we just wanted it to be, that it's all correct. Uh, and that is 
Very fascinating. So apparently they are using the T239. It is based on the Ampere technology with some Lovelace features. Again, this guy is very reliable. I went through just a few things. I talked to a few people to find out who watch him more often. And it does turn out that like his NVIDIA sources seem to be pretty legit. So take that for what he will. He's not specifically like a Nintendo YouTuber or anything. He's just an NVIDIA YouTuber uh, who's got a lot of sources. So uh, take that for as it is. I'll link to the video down below if you want to check out all of his opinions on it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.